So this video is about using two-way tables. Now you would have seen two-way tables before, but this time I'm framing a little bit differently. We're talking about investigating the associations between two categorical variables. So let's just take a look. So I'm going to survey males and females about their cheese preference. Some people like hard cheese, some people like soft cheese. So I go to the first person and I say, are you a male or a female? And they say, I'm male and I like hard cheese. And I'm next to the next person and they say, I'm female and I like soft cheese. And I'm male and I like hard cheese. And I'm female and I like hard cheese. And I'm male and I like soft cheese. And I get a big long list of data points. Okay, now if I get a big long list of say 100 data points or 50 data points, a big long list doesn't really interpret the data as well as a two-way table would be. So let's instead put this into a two-way table. Putting it in a table like this is going to make our life much, much easier and faster. Now, something I need to mention about two-way tables is that you need to put your explanatory and response variables in the right place. So by um, convention, we always put our explanatory variable here, and we always put our response variable here. Now the hypothesis here is that your sex uh, determines what kind of cheese you are more likely to prefer. Okay, so sex explains cheese preference. Okay, so you walk out onto the street, you start surveying people again, and you go, right, uh, you're male and you like hard cheese, uh, you're female and you like hard cheese as well, and you're in this category, and this category, and this category, and oops, five, and that category, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, this one, this one, and this one, and we start tallying things up. Side note, this way of tallying is really stupid. You should stop tallying things this way and tally in them like this instead. So one person likes this, two people like this, three people like this, four people like this, and five people like this. And then you draw another box and another box and another box. I like this way of tallying. It gets used a lot in Southeast Asia. I think some places like France and Brazil use this as well. I think it's way better than those tally marks. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but I love it. All right, so we can see we have eight males that like hard cheese. We have five people that, uh, five females that like hard cheese. We have four males that like soft cheese, and we have seven females that like soft cheese. Let's replace those tally marks now with some numbers. All right, much better. Uh, now we can come up with our totals all here, right? So it looks like 13 people in total like hard cheese. It looks like four plus seven is 11 like soft cheese. It looks like um, there were seven plus five, 12 total females surveyed, and it looks like there were 12 total males surveyed, and this and this should both add up to the same number, 24. All right, so this is an interesting sort of question here because we survey the same number of males as the same number of females, but that might not be the case. Maybe we surveyed way more females than males or vice versa. Just make a small change here, 14 instead of four, and that brings our total here to 22, and it brings our totals here and here to 21 and uh, 34. Okay, now that we've surveyed way more males than females, it's really hard to tell, like, which males prefer, like, do males prefer soft cheese over hard cheese, or do females, etc., etc. But, if we use percentages, it's going to be way easier to compare. So I'm going to redraw this table again, but this time I'm going to do something called column percentages. Alright, so let's calculate our column percentages. Now, this only works if you've chosen to do the explanatory variable on the top here. Otherwise, things aren't going to really make a lot of sense. So, explanatory variable at the top, response along here. So, now we do what's called our column percentages. So, we do 8 divided by 22, and we put our answer in here as a percentage. So, 8 divided by 2 times a 100. Now, that's going to give me 36.36 recurring percent, and I can put that in here. Now, how do we interpret that? That's the percentage of males, total males, that prefer hard cheese. Now, I can do the same here, 14 divided by 22 times 100. That's going to be 63.63%. Now, when I add those two together, I should get 100%, right? Because they're the only two options. Now, if you add them together, you'll get 99.99%. 99 
but that's because of rounding here. If you took the exact number and the exact number and added them together, you get 100%. Finally, we can do the females hard and soft by doing uh, 5 divided by 12 and 7 divided by 12. So when I do that, I get 41.67% and 58.33%, 100%. I should note, I just realized I stuffed up my rounding here, 63.64%, not 63%, and that does mean that those add up to 100% now. Okay, so uh, this is useful because now I can say that from the survey I did, 36% of males prefer hard cheese, whereas 41% of females prefer hard cheese. And 63% of males prefer soft cheese, whereas 58% of females prefer soft cheese. Now, I could show that graphically. And I'm going to do it here with a nice little column graph. My explanatory variables on the x-axis, my cheese preferences or my cheese percentage preference on the y-axis. Now, let's look. Males prefer hard cheese 36% of the time. 36% of the time. little line about there like that. Uh, okay, um, females prefer hard cheese 41% of the time, 41, a bit higher there. Obviously, you'd be a lot more careful with yours. Um, now, the rest of it is all soft cheese. So, because we're going all the way up to 100%, we can just draw in the rest of our bar chart here. Draw in the rest of our bar chart here. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, we better label some stuff up. All right, and we have a nice little finished graph here. These should be straight lines, right? These should be the same width, you know that. Uh, but I have a legend here that says soft cheese is in pink and hard cheese is in blue. And when we look at this graph, we can say something like it appears that. Um, Females prefer hard cheese a little more than males do. Um, we can say that it appears that both males and females prefer soft cheese over hard cheese, right? Because they're both more than 50% soft cheese. Uh, but this really allows us to compare those two categorical variables, male and female, these two categorical variables, soft cheese and hard cheese. But we're not limited to two categorical variables. We could have asked them about hard cheese, soft cheese, and grilled cheese, maybe? Or some other three option graph. So here's the option here. Uh, I'm testing uh, year one to six, year seven to 12, and university students, and I'm asking them about their potato preferences. Do you prefer boiled potatoes, mashed potatoes, or do you prefer chips? And those are the percentages I gave them. I can put them on this graph, year one to six, year seven to 12, and uni. The percentages are here, and I'll label that all up. A graph that looks something like that. Now, use a ruler, please. Mine's really ugly but you should get the general idea of what I'm doing. I've got my legend here, I've got my title here, and I've put all that information in there. All right, that's how you use two-way tables to investigate the associations between two categorical data.